I've been wholesaling real estate for over eight years now, and I've closed over 2,500 wholesaling real estate deals in that time frame. And what I want to do today is really compress 2,500 wholesaling real estate deals, which <laughs> it's a lot over the last eight years, and really compress the most no BS wholesaling business advice for anybody watching this. This is advice I've had in my entire eight year journey in wholesaling real estate. Guys, I, I'm an old man now, okay? I'm 24, about to be 25 years old. And I started wholesaling real estate really by, I was like late 16, turning 17. And in the past eight years, my life has been completely changed from this business. But I've only been able to do this by learning a lot of hard lessons and a lot of things I think if you know instantly now, you're gonna have a ton of success. So what I wanna do is really compress these 2,500 deals all into one simple video. This will be a video that is just going to help you out, make you really understand how to become successful in this business, especially as a beginner. If you're a wholesaler going out here, going from 100 grand, trying to go from 200 grand up to a million dollars, this is exactly what you need to know, and this is what's gonna help you out. Everything you need to know for success is in this video condensed so you can start doing wholesaling real estate deals. So let's break this all down and let's share exactly everything I need to know and everything you know that you need to know for success. So let's start off with probably one of my first and we're gonna make this red so it really pops out for you. Number one, never trust, always verify. What I mean by this is in your journey in wholesaling real estate, you're gonna get a lot of people talking. A lot of people saying things, a lot of people talking about how Amazing. they wanna go out here and become the, you know, I'm the best wholesaler in the world, I'm the greatest title company in the world, I'm the best at this, I'm the best at that. When the planet Ooh, you're gonna get a lot of people that say a lot of things. And what I mean by this is anybody can say anything. Anybody can say that, oh, I did 2,500 wholesaling deals. Anybody can say that I did 10,000 deals. Anybody can say that I sold my wholesaling business for this much money. Anyone can say anything. What I want you to understand is never trust, always verify. And so when somebody goes out here and says, Zach, I closed over $100,000 of wholesaling deals. Thank you so much. Can I go on your podcast? And I always say, okay, great. If I'm gonna put my reputation out here and put a title of, hey, I taught this guy how to make 100 grand, I'm going to need to verify he closed 100 grand. And I go out and ask for HUDs and usually I get them and I put them on the channel, we do a podcast. I've had a lot of real estate wholesaling influencers in this game uh, request to be on the podcast to go promote a course. And I'm, not a, I'm never adverse to paid coaching. I think it's the 10, 15,000 programs that you know, I, I'm always against. But I'm like, okay, well, you never post anything really about wholesaling anymore. You always talk about meditation or something stupid. Can you just give me the last hundred thousand dollars of HUDs? Just, just like, just give me HUDs, like a hundred grand of HUDs. I'm not even asking for the last year. Like, give me at least five years. And like, we, we, that's private information. I can't share that. I'm like, just, like, just show me what it is, or let me call your title company. Oh, but don't call my title company. I'm like, you publicly said you do this. Like, can I, do I have permission to call your title company? You've publicly stated who your title company is. Oh, no, don't do it. You'll be surprised the amount of fraudsters out here in wholesaling. Very, very big names per se in your minds that don't wholesale anymore. Guys, you can call my title company. You can talk to anyone and verify that I actually am doing wholesaling deals. I'm actually going out here and becoming successful. I'm Jay Ving, doing local, doing virtual anywhere across the country. And the people doing deals with me can verify it too. You're gonna have a lot of JV partners also. Say, Zach, or you know, hey bro, I can JV with you. I closed 15 deals already. Just ask for a HUD. That's all I'm like, just, can I, can I get a HUD from you? Just show me you've closed at least a couple deals with your name. Bro, just trust me, bro. And the biggest warning you're gonna have when you ever push somebody on verification if they've ever closed a deal or if you know, they're trustworthy, if they always throw religion in, run. Hey man, I'm, uh, I'm a man of the Lord, right? I, I get that all the time. Zach, I'm a man of the Lord, you should trust me. Usually when somebody has to stoop so low of saying, hey, I'm part of this religion, this is why you should trust me, they're always the ones to run away. Now, for example, a good 
Christian, a good Muslim man, a good Jewish person, right? That is like very religious and has great morals and follows the religion and is like very, very trustworthy and really, really righteous. Those people don't have to tell you that, hey, I'm part of this religion. This is why you should trust me. They're like, hey, my reputation is super important and I'm a man of my word. And they show proof. And so the real religious people that are really, really trustworthy and good, those are the ones that don't scream it out. The ones that try to tell you that run away from. So you're going to be very, you got to be very, very careful with this. Now, on top of this too, another lesson I think a lot of wholesalers need to understand is the more you work, the luckier you get. And what I mean by this is the more you text, the more you cold call, the more you comp, the more you talk to cash buyers, you know, the more you go out and reach out to wholesaling friendly title companies, the more you start doing these things, the quote luckier you get, right? I think a lot of people say, oh, this guy's so lucky. This guy got lucky for his success. No, these people don't get lucky in wholesaling. They don't get their first deal just because, you know, they're like, oh, I'm just, I just got so lucky finding the right side. There's luck in it. The truth is the ones that are quote lucky are the ones that put in the most work. And if you ever look at a curve of wholesalers who put in hours in this business and ones that get success, it is always an insane, perfect curve up of the more hours you put into wholesaling versus the more deals you get. It's never the ones that get less, that work less, that make more money. Now, once you start getting to, you know, 15, 20 deals a month, you you can kind of get into that and, and scale it out. But really like we're starting out for like 250K, your first quarter million wholesaling. The ones that put in the more or hours, always get the more money. That, that is just a fundamental of how this business works. If you are not doing this, you're not finding deals. And so this is why I think every wholesaler possible that comes to me and says, Zach, what's the secret sauce, man? How do we become successful? How do I actually get deals? All these things. The honest truth is the more you work, the lucky you get. If you want to get lucky, you, you want to start having more success. Shocker, the more effort you put in. If you want to get really good at basketball, the more hours you spend training and playing basketball is going to make you better. Now, there's a flip side to this, right? There's a lot of people that are obsessed with, you know, studying everything and making everything perfect. The funny part is when you're going out here and watching people play basketball, that doesn't make you better. Watching other people do video games, you can learn a couple pointers, which is nice. It'll help aid you for your success. Without you actually participating or actually training in the field, you are not going to gain any more skills. And you know, it's, it's funny for basketball, right? Everyone loves watching basketball, but you don't get better at basketball by watching. You get better by doing it. Same thing in wholesaling. You do not get better at cold calling by just watching me cold call for hours a day. That's great. You'll know what to say. But really, after a couple hours, like you get, I'm saying the same things, right? And I answer obje- objections in different ways, and that is important. But by you actually going here and calling yourself, you first gain the confidence, you first gain the belief of what to do, and then your, your life gets a lot better. Belief, conviction, confidence is everything. And if you go out here and you start believing in yourself, you'll start doing a lot better. And the best way to start believing yourself is having more trust that you can do something. And the gain more trust is just having more skills. Now, the next lesson I, I think a lot of wholesalers should know is if you are this type of person that wants to start hiring VAs and employees and, and all the scaling and it's all sexy, it's all great, but these people are expensive, right? And if you do it right, like if you hire like American workers, like they need their PTO, they need their health insurance, right? They need all their benefits. It's very expensive to have these employees and you're not really gonna master that skill. And so what I can tell you is you should really consider going solo and just doing everything yourself for your first $200,000 in wholesaling, right? Make $200,000 in assignment fees. The reason for this is to hire a VA for cold calling. If you haven't put enough hours calling them, calling yourself, you're not going to know what good KPIs are for your business. You're not going to know how many calls should land a lead, what is a good contact rate, if your data is good or bad. You gain these skills by doing it yourself. And I hate to tell you, but like every good entrepreneur does this, right? Like the one person, you know, always look up to is like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, right? Any of these people, what they do is they try to go and do the work of the regular layman and they try to get in their shoes, right? 
You're never supposed to be on a high horse telling people who are shoveling dirt and gravel and construction about how easy their job is or how you can do it better unless you actually do it. And this is why I can train someone in cold calling because I'm better than them at it. And so I've mastered the skill and I can teach it very well. And so a lot of people love talking to VAs or teaching VAs how to text blast and they've never sent a text themselves or know exactly what it is like to reply. I challenge everybody watching this, like try to do text blasting yourself. You'll find the top five common replies and you'll learn exactly how it works. Then when you train a VA to do it, you're going to teach them based on what you're used to. Same thing with cold calling. And so it, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to teach somebody something you don't know, right? A lot of people love teaching their VAs how to do acquisitions when they never closed a deal or they, they'll hire a transaction coordinator without ever doing a wholesaling deal or, or any of these things. You have to master that skill before you can teach it. I mean, same thing with wholesaling. Like, well, I, could, I would never feel comfortable making a YouTube video teaching how to wholesale real estate unless I've cleared half a million dollars. And I had to clear half a million dollars in assignment fees basically before I was even comfortable making a wholesaling video. And that's why I, I didn't start any wholesaling videos till I was like 19, 20 years old because I didn't feel, I felt like an imposter unless I made at least half a million, right? And you know, that, that, that's just how I am. And I, I don't think you should be listening from somebody who hasn't done something. I just, it's, it's pretty simple, right? Now for my beginners out here, another really important lesson I, I wanna emphasize is to focus on what I call the core four. And what the core four is, is there's a lot of shiny objects. There's a lot of new strategies. There's a lot of new marketing things here and there and each way and everywhere. And you're, you're gonna be told, you're gonna be said to do this, that, and, and, and the other right. But really the core four is what has been working for decades in this business. Like, like over 20 years, this are, these are ways people find wholesaling real estate deals. And it's worked for 20 years and it's continued to work because it is tried, true, and tested. Your cousin who's going out here trying to do novation deals, like I, it ain't tried, true, and tested. What the core four does is it is the core principles in wholesaling that have always landed people deals since the start of this business. One thing I always love showing people is this book. And I, I always get like flack because you can't, this book is $300 now. When I first got this book, it was five bucks at every, like, every bookstore Goodwill. Uh, but a quick story about this book. It's called How Real Estate Fortunes Remain by George Bockel. This book, if we can search this, was bought in 1977. The Princeton House is from 1972. And so this is a book from 1972. And here are the table of contents if you wanna, if you wanna look at it, right? And then the glossary has all these other things. This is a book, when me and Rick were, flip, were flipping a house, it was in the, it was just sitting in there in a pile of books. And I call it divine intervention, right? This is before I even started any YouTube videos. And this is a book from 1972 that talks about how to make money in real estate. That is it. I mean, look, look, how, look how old this book is, right? And a lot of internet gurus claim to invent these wholesome methods, right? There's a certain somebody that claims that they basically invented subject twos. And in that book, subject twos are talk, talked about, lease options, seller financing, creative financing. There was another man that claimed on, he claimed he invented Facebook ads for, for wholesaling real estate. And George Bockel in that book in 1972 taught you how to run newspaper ads to find motivated sellers for real estate wholesaling. He talks about wholesaling real estate concepts, real estate investing concepts. He even talks about syndication for multifamily. It's an amazing book from 1972. There's definitely somebody in the chat that probably has a copy of that book that can give you the scanned copy of it. I tried to buy the, buy the rights, but Princeton Hall's pain in the butt, uh, but it's an amazing book from 1972 and probably an amazing relic and the most valuable book I have in my collection because it proves that since 1972, these, these concepts in the core four, cold calling is in that book, right? Going here and finding distressed real estate, you will get better discounts on it is in that book. And the point is this guy is, it was an old man when he wrote that in 1972. So he's been doing this since the 1910s, 1920s. And he learned from a guy probably who have been doing it since the 1800s. And so the concept of wholesaling real estate, real estate investing has always been a legal thing and always been a thing in here, right? And a lot of those principles are in the core four. And the core four is driving for dollars, getting your car, looking for ugly looking houses, cold calling motivated sellers, going out here and pulling government lists, 
which is not in there. Uh, but then going out in paid lists, paid lists aren't in there too, but paid lists have only really been a thing since the early 2000s. Uh, CoreLogic, which is a multi-billion dollar corporation, uh, is probably the most famous example. Uh, they own a service called ListSource that used to be the, the thing, now no one really uses it anymore, it's too expensive. Uh, but basically going out here and paying for data on real estate has always proven deals the last 20 years. List source has, has been used forever. And now we have other services, right, that have that, that makes it a lot easier. Uh, government lists have been a thing too because you can go out here and get the data from the government, right? Probate courts have been going on since pretty much common law, <laughs> right? Even in England in the 1600s, right? Cold calling has always been a thing and just finding ugly houses and getting deals by that has always been a thing. And so the core four will always lead you to success in wholesaling real estate. Just letting everybody know, all right, the, the core four has always worked. And when a lot of people ask, Zach, you know, man, I don't know how to become successful. I've tried all these things. I have all these automated marketing systems for success and that they get all these crazy workflows and Zapier integrations. Homeboy, the core four, stop trying to get all fancy. Stop trying to get all cute. Trying for dollars, cold calling, governmentless paid. Like that's how you become successful. Focus on the core four. That is gonna land you deals. Now, ironically, I made my first $100,000 in wholesaling real estate with not using any of these concepts. I did banded signs, which you know don't work as well anymore. They still work for a lot of people. Uh, but that is very ironically, it's a really old school concept. It's been used since 30, 40 years ago. So it's still an old school method, but like the core four will never lead you astray in this business because it's happened for the last 20 years and it's gonna keep going on for the next 20 years. The one thing about paid list is there's a couple of these services that have real estate data that are really, really crappy, like really, really, really bad. For example, there's this one service that if you search for pre foreclosures in Dallas, like nothing pops up and you know, they claim to have all this data. Like it just, if you get really bad data, you're going to get really, and if a service can't even pull a pre foreclosure in Dallas, like just imagine how bad the data is. Just, just saying the truth out here. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. So, Really, really bad data is going to be bad too. So when I say paid list, like you have to use a top tier service, right? I mean, you can look anywhere in the bio. Like we, we show what good services are. Government lists are always going to be the best straight from the horse's mouth and straight from the courts. It always works. But like the core four will never leave you astray. Like you try all these fancy things, PPC, PPL, and all these crazy strategies. Focus on just what is working. And what has always worked are these core four principles that no guru wants to tell you because they can't, they can't sell you a course on this. That they can't sell you, legi I can't stress this enough, they can't sell you a program on this and I'm not here to make money off of you, okay? Yes, I want you to send, you know, I flip request people some JV deals, then you can send me deals from there and you know, I like doing more wholesaling deals but at the end of the day, I have no $10,000 program, I, I have nothing crazy to sell you here. What's gonna work is gonna help you out the most. And I believe in karma. If I give you information for free that helps you, I'll get helped out at the end. That's how this business always works. Next here, a really important lesson I think a lot of people have to understand is shiny objects will appear to you. Shiny objects will look sexy. Shiny objects will always be there. But that shiny object, men and women, friends, will always lose its luster. And I'm talking to the guys and gals out here that start making good, decent money out here. The shiny objects will always lose their luster. And so when you start making a lot of money wholesaling, a lot of really cool things start appearing for you, right? Cars, jewelry, boats, you know, fun thing, clubbing and all that, right? And they all seem sexy and great, but like they all lose their luster. There's a couple things that don't lose its luster, in my opinion, that I'm not gonna get into. But really at the end of the day, don't be going crazy on the shiny objects. And as a guy that has driven in pretty much any nice car you can imagine that has leased, looked at, rented, bought, sold. The simple things always work the best, right? I don't think I've ever been more happy than driving a, a Ford pickup truck, right? That, that's just how I am. Uh, certain things, right? I, I've driven very, 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 very nice cars and I, I just, a pickup truck still bettered me, right? At the end of the day. I, I'm, to be one that goes after inanimate objects, is not my thing, uh, but I mean, there's a couple of luxuries out of my life, you know, I, I will tell you a, a very, very, very nice house, something I, I like living in and something I ain't gonna say anything bad about, right?
but the other things, especially depreciating assets, I, I'm not going to look good, right? I, I, I don't do crazy clothes, nothing like that. A couple of nice things here and there, but what I'll tell you is you're, you're going to get a lot of shiny objects being thrown at you when you're starting to make money in wholesaling. Be very, very, very careful with it. You're going to be throwing a lot of things. Be very, very careful. I will tell you this. The only things that I deem as a shiny object are luxury, which I think have always been worth it. And I'm just giving my opinion. I've spent a lot of money on a lot of things. The only thing in my personal view, two things that have always been worth the money, even though they're stupid, is number one, traveling. I've traveled a lot of countries and I've never felt like I wasted money traveling around the world. Uh, Number two is spending money on my family. Now, I love spoiling my mom, buying her stupid, crazy things. I'll give an example once. I don't talk about my mom much because she doesn't want to be public or anything. I bought her a Gucci belt. I've never spent so much money on a dang belt in my life, but she wanted it and she deserves it. She's my mom, right? And I felt so dirty buying a, buying a lot of money on a belt, but like it makes her happy. And her, 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 her like face when I just surprised her with is like, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And I can't describe how good that feels. Me buying a thousand dollar Gucci belt is, is really dang stupid and I would feel embarrassed and I'd feel dirty and it's kind of stupid. Uh, but buying it for a family member, my mom, like she deserves the world, right? And so those are luxuries in life that are shiny objects, but they're always worth it to me. Rewarding yourself for good things are always good. But at the end of the day, you're going to get thrown these shiny objects everywhere and you just got to learn how to say no. All right. That's one thing I can tell you. You should enjoy your life. You you should do this. If I can give anyone any advice, I'm not giving anyone any personal finance advice, but one thing I will tell you is make a rule to only spend 20% of your money. And what I mean by this is if you're a guy that makes $100,000 a year in wholesaling, try your best to only spend 20 grand. Make it a rule for yourself. Just do that. And so I have always lived by that rule. I'm at a point now where I can't spend that much money. I've tried. This year I've spent money on a lot of stupid stuff. And I can't hit the 20%, unfortunately. I just, does this sound bad? Like, I, I feel like a jerk saying this, but like, I just can't do it, right? Too much profit's coming in, right? 20% of your profit. But like, if you're a guy making 200 grand, only spend 40, invest the rest, taxes, invest the rest, and you're never gonna get wrong, right? One, one principle I want everyone to know this, saying this too, is in my, in my 18 years, I wanna say this, in my 18 years of real estate, Sorry, in my, my 24 years of being alive and my really eight years of heavily, heavy investing, I will tell you, let's see here. There's only two things that are sure things and I hate showing it. I feel like a jerk saying this, but the S&P 500 and real estate, those are the only two sure investment opportunities. One thing I, I, I don't, I feel unqualified to talk about this, even though I have a very, very, very large, I, I mean, I have multiple millions in each one. If, if I give you a figure amount, I, I feel like a jerk saying it, so I will not reveal it. I'm trying to be as humble as possible for that. I've, I've invested a lot of money, a lot of things, and made a lot of money with things. One thing I will tell you is I don't want to say, I don't want to talk about this, but I have to. The reason why I have to talk about this is because these wholesaling real estate gurus are selling you these investment products promising returns and all like I know one guy who's promising this syndication I know there's one guy that's promising an Amazon FBA score this one there's this one person I will remain nameless that sold you crypto like crazy to me the other one sold you an NFT this other guy sold you an NFT that went to zero and you know he took or she took millions of dollars and practically went to zero and then just like didn't talk about it and shoved it under the rug and you know, these people sell these $10,000 NFTs and they promise you can come to my event every year for the rest of your life if you own it, you know, and then, then you just go, you takes your money and they just, a lot of these scams out here, right? Then promise investment products. I've seen it from every wholesaler that's a guru mentor because like they, they just can't make enough money. One guy literally trying to sell you crypto, which is just so far, like a wholesaler. Just, I'm not getting into it. Big, big people like that too. Forex, all these things. One thing I will tell you is if you are making 200 grand in wholesaling and you want to invest the money, the only two things I can tell you over a 20 year period that has not gone down is real estate in a population over 100,000 people and the S&P 500. That is it. At the end of the day, if you're looking to invest, I'm not telling you what to do with your money. 
But at the end of the day, those are the only two, in my opinion, surefire ways to put your money in that you're not going to get scammed and lose your money. That is it. Oh, but real estate, my favorite is the guy that says, I lost everything in 2008. You did not lose everything in 2008. You lost because you sold. These guys in Florida, I mean, my rentals right now and my Airbnbs have appreciated 30% year over year for the past three years. Like, even if you bought in the peak in 2006, you would be up like 3x. And so I, I don't want to hear that, right? And so, you know, what about this stock or this? No stocks, S&P 500 or real estate. At the end of the day, those are the only two sure things I can tell you right now to put your money in. Now, I'm not telling you to do that, but if somebody's saying, guys, I have an opportunity, invest this, invest this. Your guru is going to tell you to invest in it. I can put my reputation out here telling you that those are the only two sure things that I have found in my eight years investing money. That is it. Okay. Now I've made a lot of gambles and done well. I don't talk about it. Rick, I have some funny ones. I don't, I, I'll, I, maybe I'll mention it a little later, uh, but I will tell you this. S&P 500 real estate, the only two sure things. Okay. Very, very important. Next. I've said this a lot and I'll continue saying it. Nobody cares about your struggles. Let me say this one more time. Nobody cares about your struggles. Now I'm saying this in the nicest, most empathetic way. You are going through a lot probably. You are probably burning the candle at both ends right now. You're probably working a full-time job, taking care of your kids. Maybe you gotta take care of an ailing grandmother or mom or dad. And you're just at a dead end. All you do is work, all you do is struggle about bills, and you wanna make a change. That is admirable. You are doing the right thing. You are listening to the right person, I believe. I, I mean, I make a lot of money wholesaling, right? You are doing the right thing. Now, you have probably been programmed from your family or from the past that, that your generation and your family has always struggled and so you are gonna struggle. You are watching this because you know you are meant for more and you know you can do more. Leave your past in the past. What's going to happen right now is the future. And one thing that's a little difficult to do is to get rid of your mindset and get rid of your negative thoughts. I'm not getting all voodoo, voodoo, voodoo about thoughts and thinking, but it is true. If you think positive, if you think about the good things in your life, not the bad things, your life gets a lot better. The person that lost their arm in a, in a car accident, God forbid, constantly thinks about how they don't have an arm and about how they would do anything just to have their arm back or arms back. And you're going to go out here complaining with all your arms about how difficult your life is. I have 19 year olds that are depressed for no reason. And I, I, I can get in trouble saying this, right? I've, there's, I know 19 year olds that are depressed, like my friend's brothers that are depressed, playing video games and doing drugs. And both their parents are alive. They're very loving, not abusive or anything like that. You know, they, they got a girlfriend and they have a, just a regular job and, and they're depressed. And it's crazy to me. And they're hyped up in all this medication. I, I don't get into all this, but like they're depressed and I'm like, do you know how you have a roof of your head, you're being taken care of, you have a great family, like you have the ability to change your life. If you live in the dang United States of America, you can change everything. If you don't talk about depression, look at people in World War II. Okay, look at the soldiers in World War II. Look at the people that had to deal with very difficult situations in World War II, the 1800s, the 1900s, right? All these things. Like depression's like, it's all relative. Right, because our ancestors used to be in caves, being attacked by saber-toothed tigers and lions and and all these things, and you know their, their, their kid got eaten by a tiger yesterday, right? Like, like you don't have to worry about that situation. Right? You're not in the jungle and lions are going eating your kids anymore, right? Like, you know, we've evolved as a society, which is very, very nice, right? This is good, but I think a lot of people's propensity towards depression or what's difficult, it's very, very hard, you know. And so what I can tell you is you're going to have struggles, but your struggles are all relative, all right? So you're, you're, you're complaining about how hard your life is versus a single mom of four. It's all relative. And so just I want, to, I want you to understand this, that you have your struggles, but leave it, leave it at the side when you're getting this business because having that mindset that everything's hard for me will never do you good. Only allow thoughts that actually benefit you. And I've said this before, and I'll keep saying this. Is this thought, is this mindset, is saying what I'm saying right now going to benefit me in the future for success or hurt me 
is going to help or hurt me. You telling yourself that, hey, today's been a hard day. Today's been a bad day. Don't believe in that, okay? There, there, there's people that woke up and their, their son's not alive anymore, right? There's people that woke up and they lost their legs. There's people that woke up and they're not alive anymore. And so you, your, your definition of a bad day is so off. And so really understand how lucky you are to be alive and how you have the tools. You have the chance to form and shape your life. In the 1700s, you, you might have not had this opportunity to go become super rich by working 10, 12, 20 hours a week. But you have the opportunity now. So really understand how lucky you are right now. Just understand this. Do not limit it, okay? Does it serve you for success or does it not? Next here. People will screw you. Get over it. What I mean by this is every single dang week, I get screwed on a wholesaling deal. Every week. And this is a big reason why I've shut down JVs publicly and I'm only doing Thorberg Plus students right now is, guys, I, a couple of weeks ago, I had three, almost four deals stolen. Like 20K coming to me, $40,000 deal in the bag and the wholesaler decides to get out of the contract, rewrite the contract for a smaller, cheaper price and then kick me out of the deal. And it, it takes a big man to go out here and not publicly shame the person and let them know how much of a piece of work they are. And they go around and use your buyer. And that happens a couple times in a week and you, you lose 80 grand in a week. You could have a mental breakdown. As a man that believes in karma, and I'm not, no voodoo woodoo with that, right? I, I call it voodoo woodoo. Like I'm not, no mysticism, right? Nothing extra outside of science, but I do believe you do good, good comes to you. You, you just take it on the chin and you just understand that a certain population is going to screw you. And this comes back to trust, not verify. And I can't do that with someone that's never done a deal, right? If someone's never done a deal and they decided they want to screw you, I don't have, they don't have any reputation of it. So I, I, I always trust if they've never done a deal before, like I'm trying to help them out and they always have the ability to screw me. And I believe it, it will hurt you in the future doing this. But you have to understand that sellers will try to screw you. Buyers will try to screw you. JV partners will try to screw you. And what you have to do is just minimize that the most you can. And for example, in some of these deals, like I let the title company know like, hey, I'm getting paid on this. And I make sure that we follow up with the title company weekly to make sure they know I'm getting half my JV or, you know, the seller's good or the buyer's good. And still there is an ability to get screwed on a deal, but it goes down a lot more when you do this. I just understand there, there are snakes in the grass. This business is all not perfect, great people. And there, there's always people out here trying to pull a fast one on you. Now, I don't get upset. I don't get emotional, right? It's fine, right? As a guy that's uncomfortable spending $10,000 on, on something, right? That's a luxury. Losing 80 grand in a week is nothing to me. But like, if I got to spend 10 grand on something, I'm like, my palms are sweaty, right? Don't get me started how much a first class ticket to overseas is, right? You're going to get stressed. Like, I, I get physically uncomfortable sometimes paying that amount of money. Even though like I make a bunch of money, I'm just not used to it, right? But I'll lose 80 grand, like it's, it's just karma because you get double or triple that the next week after, right? So like it's all, it all evens out, right? But just understand people will screw you and just understand everybody has the ability to do that to you. And what you want to do is try to at least minimize that overall, right? For example, I have a wholesaler. He's doing a JV deal with somebody and he's really worried because somebody's asked for their social security. They got a double close. It seems a little sketch. And I just messaged the guy, just making sure he's doing it from the up and up. And he actually is. And he said he's going to do the right thing and give the guy the money. But he, he could screw you, right? But you got to minimize it at, at the best you can. And so just understand this, right? I've said this a lot. And I don't know if a lot of people get uncomfortable when I say this, but it's true. The only person in business and really the only person in my life when it comes to wholesaling real estate that I know for a fact that will never screw me is Rick Ginn, like my, my dad. Like he's the only one I know that will not screw me. At the end of the day, anybody else I work with, with a lot of trusted people I do, I still have a 0. .0005 chance they're gonna screw me, right? They could take my money and run for a hundred grand. Like a lot of people can do that. But I know the only one that I know is a 0% chance this person would rather die than screw me is Rick Ginnon. Same thing with me. I'd rather die than screw Rick on a deal, right? And your re reputation is everything. So I, I want everyone to understand is when your reputation is high, you have a lot more to lose. And so when I'm doing a JV deal with somebody 
if I decide to say F you, I'm stealing your deal and you have all this proof and I steal a $50,000 deal from you and you can post it and show all the proof that I screwed you. I did a message saying F you, man, I'm taking all your money. The reputational hit that I would take is millions of dollars for screwing out of 50 grand. But the broke person that tries to screw you has nothing to lose. And so one thing I will tell you is the person that's broke is a lot more likely to screw you than the one that's not broke. And this is why I tell people to stop JVing with broke people. Because broke people are more willing to screw you than somebody who is not broke and has a lot more to lose. That's what it is. At the end of the day, that, that's, that's how it is. And so are you, if you're going to get robbed, are you more likely to get robbed from a millionaire or somebody that has no money? Somebody has no money. They have nothing to lose, right? The millionaire has a lot more to lose. And so that's why it's very, very important to understand people. That's why I can't drive reckless. I have to, my net worth is way too big for me to drive reckless, text and drive and hit somebody because the lawsuit that could happen from that is insane. I have a lot more to lose when I drive a car. And so you got to understand that if you're dealing with somebody, work with someone that's some assets, hopefully, because they're a lot less likely to screw you. Next here is my 1000 hours rule. What is my 1000 hours rule? Well, what my 1000 hours rule is, is if you're somebody that feels like they're struggling, feels like they can't get ahead, feels like somebody that just can't get any wholesaling deals done, what I'm telling you to do is put 1000 hours in this business. Put 1000 hours into wholesaling real estate. I promise you, once you put 1000 hours in, it's very, very rare. I know two examples and I know, I know them perfectly to a T probably explain it right now if you want. The two people that put a thousand hours in that didn't get a deal. It, it does happen. But out of the 250,000 people that's been through my wholesaling course for wholesaling.com, really only two that hit a thousand like didn't become successful. And that was because they're just per perpetual broke people. I, I, I don't know. How do I say that sound like a jerk? But like they're perpetually people that self-destruct. It's the best way I can explain it. But for most people, if you put a thousand hours into cold calling, texting, talking to sellers, marketing in the right market, right? It's extremely difficult for you to get screwed. It's really, really hard to get screwed and to just never get any success by putting a thousand hours in. And I, I've talked about this a lot in the discord, but like if you had a marker on your forehead, right? I was watching that Justin Timberlake movie, right? Where you had time and like, it had like the thing on your wrist. But like, if you had a tattoo on your forehead on how many hours you put into wholesaling, and I, I had you guys all in the room, and any person that had over a thousand, I put them in a corner, and the person that didn't have a thousand, put them in another corner. If I said, raise your hand if you've made over a hundred grand this year, 90% of the people are gonna have that over a thousand. It's just, it's just how it works. And, you're gonna find the most successful people always put the more, most hours in. And the funny part is, is because they believe in their abilities, once you have belief, confidence, they believe in the words you say and the actions you do, you'll start getting wholesaling deals. And so put your thousand hours in, you'll find a lot of success. Next lesson here, and a very important one, is to always lowball. I cannot stress this enough. When in doubt, lowball. When you're stressing over the MAO, or the cops, or how can I become sick? Like, how can I figure out the, the, the price of this deal? Just slow ball, okay? Like, I, I have become more successful doing these 80. Uh, the reason people know me and Rick really well starting out is because we're the ones that got these 60, 70, 80, 90, 100K pops on our wholesaling deals. And our ARVs are like three, 400 grand, right? They're not crazy. And the reason we became so dang successful doing really big deals is we just gave embarrassing lowball offers. Heck, we had, we had an expose. All right, Rick got exposed from a YouTube channel called The Young Turks. Now, I have no, I have no opinions of them outside of that little uh, YouTube video they did. It got a lot of views. And it was talking about how bad it is to just lowball people. And it was so funny. If you ever want to look at the, the Young Turks, that was a very interesting one. Uh, but they did a whole expose on Rick Ginn because he said just to lowball sellers who own houses. Just lowball them. You make a ton of money. And it's so funny that like people get so <gasps> shocked. How dare you? Bro, I'm here to make a ton of money. 
I'm here to get filthy rich. I'm here. I'm here. You're watching this because you want to get filthy rich. If you think the house is worth 200 grand, that's what a cash bargain buy. Offer 120 grand for the house. Just offer it. Now, the one thing me and Rick are really, really infamous for, really, really infamous, infamous are for is when we lowball a seller, our success rate is four or five times higher than anybody's lowball offer because the way we frame the offer has never been replicated, replicated in the wholesaling real estate game. Nobody has ever made an offer in wholesaling like me and Rick do and the way that we teach. We teach a method called the, first of all, we got the scrunchy face method and the one that I've gotten really famous for is the good cop, bad cop method. I figured out, and I'm just gonna give you all my industry secrets. Like I just, just use it, okay? Like I'm hoping to get some deals from it and you, you don't have to pay a wholesaling guru. They make no money, you know, they down, we up, right? That, that's kind of the point. If you can make a, if you find out a deal is worth 200 grand to a cash buyer, one thing I want you to do is just blame why the offer is so low on your partner. You might be like, wait, what? So for example, if you know the deal is worth 200 grand, just say, hey, I talked to Rick and you know, he called me on the phone, he told me about it, I told him more about the property and he knows it needs some work and he told me he wants to buy this house for around 120,000. So I shut up and just hear the reaction. First of all, the person to be angry at is not me, it's Rick, but Rick's not here, right? You, 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 we, we direct our anger towards another person, right? And so we're like, I know, I, I hate Rick. He's always got the low offers. Oh, so annoying. I'm so angry with you. And it's a great way to build rapport. And you gave a bad offer, but you're not the bad guy. Nobody else in wholesaling teaches this because nobody else in wholesaling makes as much money as me and Rick usually, right? There, there's some that make a lot of money. Most of them are broke gurus, right? And they don't do this because I started doing this and the amount of money I started making has just, it, it was insane, but always lowball. Now, there's another secret to this method. If you do that, you're actually not gonna get deals. You have to do another thing. So there's two conditions that have to be met to make a lot of money lowballing motivated sellers. Number one, do the good cop, bad cop, blame your offer on someone else. But number two, very important, you must condition your sellers. Let me repeat this. You must condition your sellers. Repeat it with me, everyone. You must condition your sellers. This is one of my ultimate non-negotiable rules to wholesaling real estate acquisitions in general. When somebody tells me that they give an offer to a seller and the seller said maybe, or the offer fell apart, I don't subscribe to that theory. In wholesaling real estate, when you give an offer to a seller, the seller needs to only give you two answers. Yes or no. Here's the issue. When, when you listen to a guru, you go through the course, I'm not getting on a rant. I swear, I get on rant sometimes. Somebody in my uh, Discord shared a loom of uh, two wholesaling courses, and it, it was embarrassing how bad they were. Like, it was embarrassing how bad, like, it just, I don't want to get into how bad these guru wholesaling courses are. And these people are spending 14 grand for stuff like this. It, it, it's so funny. But if you use any of these guru programs, you're gonna give a lowball offer to a seller and the seller's gonna say, I'll think about 120 grand, I'll get back to you. And then you never get the deal. What you need to do is force the seller to make a yes or no decision. Basically saying something like, hey, you know, hey, hey Mary, I'm excited to go see you tomorrow at the house at 9 a.m. just confirming this. Hey, just so I know, and you know, just so I don't waste your time and my time, I'm running around, I see a lot of houses, and just so I can respect your time and my time, when I go and see the house, I need you to make an upfront agreement on if you can make a decision on selling the property. And so what I'm asking you, Mary, is can you make a decision tomorrow when I go see you on the house to sell it, a yes or no? And either they say yes, or they say no. They might be like, wait, what do you mean? Like, all I'm asking you is, are you okay on making a yes or no decision on selling tomorrow? If you're not, that's okay, I just won't go see the house. I, I only go to the house one time, and I just don't wanna waste your time or my time. I can't go see a house 14 times in a row, right? We only buy a select number of houses, and so if you can make a yes or no decision when I meet you there, I can go see you. And about 90% of the time, the seller's gonna say, yes, I can make a yes or no decision when you come by. 
That's perfect. The issue is the temper sense is going to say, I can't make a yes or no decision. That's okay. Well, let me come by when I can. But when you give that offer, you lose all, and I'm telling you, all leverage in the talks with the seller. Your biggest negotiate, your biggest leverage point, your biggest trump card, your biggest leverage point is your offer. That's the biggest tension of what you're going to offer, right? And you give that up if you just, like, if you, if you just spill out a number, you lose, right? But doing the good cop, bad cop works. And so the point is, if I give an offer, say, hey, I talked to Rick, he wants to buy it for around 120000 Shut up, see the reaction and say, I'll think about it, Zach. Oh, hey, 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 Mary, you, you know, remember our conversation yesterday when I said you were ready to make a yes or no decision? I know I'm a man of my word. Like, I, I, I hope you're a woman of your word. Like, you said you're ready to make a yes or no decision. Like, oh, I did say that, didn't I? Guess I'll take it. And it puts a little more pressure, but that's just what you need enough to get the deal done. It's imaginary pressure. Like, you're not forcing them to do anything, but you did ask up front for their dis- to make a yes or no decision. And a lot of sellers, I, I, I mean, you probably know this, are procrastinators at heart, right? They're, they're procrastinating their repairs. They're procrastinating paying their mortgage payments. They're procrastinating paying the liens, right? They're procrastinating on any deferred maintenance on the property, right? To procrastinators at heart. And sometimes the best thing for a procrastinator is to get them to actually do it and make the decision. That will land you the most success. Now, on top of this too, I have found the more motivated and distressed the real estate deal, the more money you are going to make. Let's repeat this. The more motivated and the more distressed the house, the more money you're gonna make. Usually, the more problems the deal has, the more money there is to be made. If it's a crazy probate with 16 heirs and the thing's going up to auction in 45 days, you're probably gonna make a stupid amount of money on the deal versus the person that's not really motivated, the deal doesn't need a lot of work, you're not gonna make the most money on that. And so the more motivated and distressed that deal is, the more money you're gonna make. Now, another thing, and probably a very controversial opinion, is are you being fed information to sell you or to inform you? And let me repeat myself here. Are, Are you being fed information to inform you or to sell you. So for example, am I making this video at the end to get you to buy a course or go give me a bunch of money so I can teach you wholesaling or the real estate? Like, no, okay? I'm giving this information because this is what I have found in the past eight years to land me wholesaling deals and give me success. That is what, that's why I'm giving this video. The more I share, the more wholesaling deals I make, the better we are, right? You are gonna be fed information, you're gonna be said things that are like a, like a cow to slaughter. Like you're, you're being put in a pen to be attacked. And what I mean by this is, if somebody tells you that wholesaling is illegal, banned, and bad, are they telling you because they have an, an agenda or they're telling it to inform you? No person in the right mind is gonna give you fake information to inform you. Like that's stupid, right? You're given fed bad information so you can make decisions based off stress and fear. For example, you know, they, they said a couple weeks ago that you know, the, the, the world is ending. You know, we're, we're in this massive, massive crash and the world's gone. And the only thing you can do is just pay me money and I'll help you out, right? You, you heard that, right? Another thing too you probably heard was, you know, whole thing's legal now. Go buy my innovation course. Go buy my flipping program, right? Like, it's all to sell you something, right? I, you know, a couple of years ago, someone said wholesaling is illegal. Go be a broker under my, go be a real estate agent under my license and let me make money off of you and give you fees, right? And you're just being fed information to go take money from you, right? There's more examples of just like wholesaling is illegal, pay me money and, and, and join my club, right? Like you get all these crazy things, right? But like most people tell you wholesaling is illegal is trying to sell you something. So let me say it again, somebody who is telling you wholesaling is illegal he usually has a course or an agenda to try to make money off you. When wholesaling is not illegal, I'm closing deals in every, pretty much every single state and we're gonna go. Someone told me wholesaling is illegal in South Carolina, did seven deals. Shocker, it's all legal, right? It drives me crazy. So you're being fed information that's bad. A lot of people say that wholesaling's dead, go buy a subject to course, right? They say, this is dead, do this, and, and all these crazy, stupid things. And at the end of the day, you are being informed bad information to go sell you. 
when I go out here and try to show you these books for the past hundreds of years of people making money in wholesaling real estate, like it, it's fine, right? And I trash on some of these people, but like I, I will tell you, subject to lease options, creative financing is a try and true way for hundreds of years to make money, right? But just understand that you're gonna still be fed information to push you in a situation to get you to buy. Just understand that. I see a lot of people doing that, right? <clears throat> Next one is you can't fake a reputation. For everybody watching this, do the right thing. No one's gonna trust you if you have no good track record. A lot of people are looking at JVs. The only way you're gonna get a lot more JV deals is by doing good JV deals and being a trustworthy, great person and giving nothing but value and greatness. Doing that will have success. Next here, fake buyers aren't real, only bad underwriters. I want everybody to write this down that has struggling in their dispo that their wholesaling deal falls apart with a bad buyer. Fake cash buyers are not real. They're all in your head. They're all imaginary. Like really think about this really hard. Fake cash buyers are not real. And what I mean by this is you're a cash buyer that claims to be a cash buyer is not a cash buyer. And if you just make a fundamental rule, hey, you have to own at least two real pieces of real estate to be considered a cash buyer, then every fake buyer does not fit that criteria and they'll ne you'll never sell a deal to them because they're not even, they, they don't even fit that criteria. And so I've started making this rule of you have to at least own two houses to, to be a cash buyer, right? And you, you ask some of these, these guys, oh, it's so funny. You, you ask some of these guys who claim to be cash buyers, hey, can you show me a house that you bought for cash in the past year? Bro, 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 that, that's private information, my guy. I, I can't share that with you, but just trust me, bro. Just trust, trust me, bro, I'm a man of the Lord. Dude, like, I, I, I'm not saying that because I'm trying to make fun of people that say that, but like you, you will legit hear people say this and then you, you, will, you will get screwed and wonder why you got screwed. You're, it's insane to me, man. Okay, it's insane. And so one thing I will tell you is fake buyers hurt real people, okay? If you're really bad at underwriting a buyer and you just trust them, bro, you're the one who gets screwed and you're the one who deserves to be screwed. It just dri it, it, it drives me crazy people do this. And so if you have a buyer that's claiming to be this big buyer, they have a proof of funds from their guru, like show me a deed that you signed to show that you, that you own real estate. Every good cash buyer, every good cash buyer will show you at least one house because they bought four or five. They'll just show you one. That's it. Simple as that. Fake buyers aren't real. And I want everyone to really understand that because a bad, bad cash buyer like you're never gonna, like you are never, ever, ever gonna get screwed from them if you just make sure they own real estate. Fake buyers never do. Now, another piece of advice I'll give to you that I don't really have written here is a, a, just a personal piece of advice. This is just what I found in eight years. This is my, you know, I, I'll personally tell you this. Me and Rick are 100% in agreement with this. But if you have a bit, if you're looking to get into a business with someone or a business partner, and it's a man or a woman, right? And they cheated on their spouse, just understand that they will cheat on you. And what I mean by this, if somebody makes a vow to another person, if it's a man making a vow to a woman to cherish them, love them, never do wrong by them, and they, they, they cheat on the mother of their children, they will screw you. Okay, this is just a fundamental rule. And this is just really, really simple. And this is a really easy business concept. I make sure all my employees don't cheat on their spouses. Because if you'll cheat on the mother of your children, you will screw me way easier and way faster. Just understand that. And a really, e like this is really, this is just real talk right now. It's really easy to find it out. You know why? Are you married? I've been married for 18 years. Good guy. No, I got, I got divorced five years ago. Why do you get a divorce? I, you know, it just uh, didn't work. Really? Go message uh, uh, ex-wife. And you know ex-wife is just going to say crap about the person, right? Oh, this person's a piece of work, blah, 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 blah. And they could say all the, like, you know, they have a skewed version of how it works, right? But if they say, no, he cheated on me, I've, I've seen that before. No work in that business, not, not at all. I will tell you that it's just fundamentals 101. If, if someone's gonna screw and cheat and cheat on their spouse, they're gonna cheat on you. And you just look at, if they got a divorce, just figure out why they got a divorce. And you know, the partner's gonna say if you cheated on you or not, and you, you'll figure it out pretty quick. And so just to understand that, then now if someone got divorced, like, you, you can't, like who cares, right? But if they got divorced because of cheating, it's over. Just understand, and that's just a piece of advice for every man or woman looking to get into business with somebody. Run if you see that, okay?
just run. All right, that, that is almost worse as a criminal record for some, for some people, I'll tell you this. I just understand that, right? And most of the people I get that screw other people in business settings cheat on their spouse. It's just true, right? It, it's a pattern, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Next here, there is no piece of information stopping you for making $100,000 in wholesaling. It's just hard work. There is nothing in Flip Alert Plus that you are gonna learn that is going to make you $100,000 versus just working hard. Now, there's a lot of people in Flip Alert Plus that come to the events and do all these things and they, they get really good connections and they just make 100 grand inside of Flip Alert Plus from other, student, from other people and students inside of it and that's great. But like it, that's through connections and relationship. It, it's not like a single piece of information that's gonna stop you I've been inside all these courses. I think everyone in the comments like they're in the discord saw that guy sharing it. And then I, you know, it got deleted. So gurus don't, don't attack me for that. But there's no piece of information from any course stopping you from making you successful. And a lot of people say you have to join my mentorship to get the real information. There's no real information that's going to stop. Like just understand this, but to understand that you'll do a lot better. Now, next is an uncomfortable truth, but wholesaling is always going to get harder. I'm saying this now, and this is a statement that is always going to be true. Wholesaling from today going forward is always going to be harder. Now really understand what I mean by that statement. There are more wholesalers joining <clears throat> and being created every single day due to TikTok and social media than ever. Wholesaling real estate is a victim of its own success. Back in the day, you had a the whole thing was a hoarded piece of information that only the very few real estate investors got to do. And it was a very hush hush secret low end business, right? And social media came, the internet, all these things. And at the end of the day, TikTok became, and really YouTube helped grow wholesaling really well, but it was still kind of a, like a DL, thing on the DL, right? And right when TikTok happened, a couple of youngsters got really, really good at, at wholesaling. And the whole thing became a victim of its own success. Wholesaling works so well because at the end of the day is the only business that you can start with zero dollars at all that can make you 40, you can run up 40 bands, $40,000 in a month with no money at all to your name. Criminal record, live anywhere in the world, internet connection, that's all you, you can run up and make 40 grand in a month. Legitimately, 100% legally. And that's the most beautiful thing about wholesaling. It doesn't discriminate, it doesn't care if you have a GED or not, you know, I'm like being a real tour. And the problem is a bunch of young kids ran up a hundred grand in a couple months. And guess what happens when you give an 18 year old a hundred thousand dollars? They, they, they go to the bank, they, they, they put it on their bed, they do the money spreads, they start buying Lambos, they actually start showing real checks like, hey, I'm 18 years old. Here's a $40,000 check from wholesaling. And guess what happens when 18 year olds have $40,000 in their hand? It goes viral. Cause every other teenage boy on fueled by swagger and testosterone watches it it says bro let's start doing this man and it, it gets it gets very viral and wholesaling just exploded and you might be one of those people watching from a tiktok now learning wholesaling right now and it, it it gets a lot harder to find the reels and the fakes at the end of the day the only way you're going to know i'm real of course, verify, don't just automatically trust me. Go to fearlessly.com, look at the testimonials that I have. Like there's not one person that has produced more people making deals than me. There's not one person on the internet that has caused somebody to get a deal in wholesaling real estate outside of me. There's not one person that has produced the, there's not one person that has produced more successful wholesalers than me and Rick. Not because I'm the richest man in the world, but because I'm the only person who's a multimillionaire in wholesaling that will give the house away for free. That's it. And so, yeah, you're learning great information, but the problem is wholesalers will make 40 grand, do the money spread, share it up, buy, buy their Hellcat. And at the end of the day, it gets viral. And unfortunately, most of the world and most of the United States still doesn't know about wholesaling, which is to your advantage, right? You somehow were able to find it, right? But the problem is it's becoming more public and more and more people are getting in this business and it's gonna get more saturated. I hate to tell you, I've just seen from my personal social medias, I've seen from the internet data of people searching wholesaling and the United States has grown really a lot with wholesalers, but the unfortunate truth is the international people are starting to make a ton of money. Like 
Think about this, for example, South Africa and Nigeria are one of the fastest growing wholesaling uh, nations outside of the United States. And they all speak English and they're all super smart and they all have good internet. It's bad. <laughs> and I'm not saying bad, but like Nigeria has a population of over 200 million. Like it's almost the size of the United States, like two thirds of the United States. And they're all smart and they all have English, really good English, and they all have good internet. Like it's a bad trifecta for us if you're worried about saturation because they're so smart. They got good internet and they speak English really well. So it's like, what are we going to do now, right? Shout out to my Nigerians out here, guys. Like if you're from Nigeria, like you have you have the same right as any American to go make a hundred grand wholesaling. And that's my opinion. I can get a lot of smack about that, but you have the same right to do it, right? And I help a lot of people out. I help a lot of people. Shout out to South Africa too. Y'all are running on different time zones, making a lot of money. And so the truth is, there's more and more wholesalers coming in and this industry is growing like crazy. It is getting insane how much this thing has grown. And I'm at a point now where I, this is weird for me. I'm working out and people say, are you Zach Ginn? I'm like, I'm like, usually this is a, is this a, is this a show? Like what, what, what is this going on? And it's, it's weird. Right. And it's like, it's kind of funny, but like, I've never been stopped everywhere in, in, in the past year. It's, it's happened a lot more. It's just kind of weird. But it's because wholesaling has grown so much and like it's becoming more mainstream. And that's pretty cool. But like wholesaling is always going to get harder from here on out for the rest of my life. It's sad to say, right? But for the next 30, 40, 50 years, wholesaling is just going to keep growing and it's going to become a more legitimate business. And so wholesaling is going to get harder if you're worried about saturation. Good news is if you want to JV and start doing deals with other people and join the discord and start doing stuff like that. It's the best time ever because there's gonna be more wholesalers to work with. And I'm just gonna, I, guys, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not giving this information to tell you that, oh man, you, you gotta get in, like you gotta get in now or it's, or it's over. It won't be over in 10 years. It's just gonna be a little harder. <clears throat> and so what I'm telling you is just get in now. It's a lot better to go all in now than all in in 10 years. Same thing as investing in stocks. Better to invest in stocks 10 years ago than it is now, okay? There's not one mutual fund that is down over a 10 year period. Except you invest in a guru. That's pretty much it. And so just understand that. Now, also, if you want to join the Discord, ZachDiscord.com. It's free, by the way. So one thing I think a lot of people are really worried when someone says, oh, just join the Discord. It's usually a $40, $50, a month Discord to join, right? You got to pay 50 bucks a month to join the Discord. Guys, my Discord's free. ZachDiscord.com. FYI. Just putting that out there, right? Wholesaling is always going to get harder. Just understand that. Next here, choose your hard, choose your stress. This has to be said, wholesaling real estate is hard. Living is hard. Existing is hard. Being broke is difficult. Being successful is difficult. Running a business is stressful. Being broke is stressful. It is all, whatever you do is going to be hard and it's going to be stressful. Choose your hard, choose your stress. Understand that, okay? Choose your hard, choose your stress. So being broke is hard, being broke is difficult, but being rich is hard too because you gotta put a lot of work into. They're both difficult. One thing I'll tell you about being broke, it's easy in the beginning, hard at the end. Jim Rohn said this quote, and I love this quote, and it's something I live by. But what does he say? He says, if you think the bill of working hard and becoming rich and successful is too expensive, wait till you get the bill for not doing it. Let that sink in for a second. If you think the bill of becoming successful is too expensive, wait for the bill of not doing it. Whoo! Whoo! Think about that. $3 million, that's the bill if you don't get into wholesaling, right? That's what you could have made versus the, the, the couple sleepless nights. Guys, I, it is comical to me, all these moms that tell me how hard wholesaling real estate is. I'm like, you just raised two kids, right? Screaming babies, sleepless night for three nights, right? Like you've already done the three years of sleepless nights. Like you're already used to it, right? Like the wholesaling is so much easier. You don't have to feed it, right? Like it doesn't cry either. It's always funny. Like I talk to these dads and it's so funny. And my favorite people to talk to are the 18, 19 year olds that don't have a girlfriend, don't have any kids, live with their parents rent free, don't have a job. And they tell me about how difficult wholesaling is. You know, I always go to the single moms because they're the ones that probably have the hardest 
uh, job. And I would just go point out two or three single moms that are like making 50, 60 grand a month. And it's just, it's just, you know, like they go through a lot more stressful stuff than you, but you'll go out here and complain about cold calling an hour a day, right? It's so funny. And this gives me back to another really important topic, but there's always somebody in a harder situation than you that succeeded. So why are you complaining? Really think about this for a second, right? Whoever you look like, sound like, whatever situation, whatever city you grew up in, there's always somebody that had that situation, but they had it a little harder, right? Maybe you, you slept on the mattress, this guy slept on the floor, right? Like, like whatever it is. And as somebody, like I, I, there's a lot of hard situations you guys are dealing with that I can't relate to, right? Like, I'll tell you, I, I never, I've never been homeless, right? And there's people out here that are trying to get a whole thing that are homeless. <clears throat> I can't, I, you, I get you've been in a harder situation than me, but I can show you a lot more people that are homeless in way worse situations than you that became successful wholesaling guys like right and so there's always somebody that succeeded that went through a harder situation than you so like I don't understand why you're complaining really you just gotta understand that's the fact of life and you know maybe you're starting the, the video game on hard mode it makes your story a lot cooler next year and I want to make this real I guys I am somebody that still believes in you know paid education to a point now I'm a guy that's always free information, but like relationships, networking events, like I get it. But I will tell you, I'm very adverse to most wholesaling guru programs because $10,000 in marketing is always better than $10,000 in education for wholesaling. This is a controversial statement, but like if you put, if you went to freewholesaling.com, learned exactly how to get in this business and learn all the knowledge possible, know what to say, put the hard work in, then you put 10 grand into cold calling, texting, direct mail, heck, even Facebook ads, you'll get a lot more ahead than spending $10,000 on education and being told you have to put five extra thousand dollars that you don't have. And if you only have 10 grand, put the 10 grand in marketing and, and go like, so I will tell you this, I paid education has its place. I, I will tell you, I'm never the fan of paying for it, right? Very, very few exceptions, not really worth it in my opinion. I have Flipper Plus, I personally think it's worth it. A lot of people make money in there and it's a great education, but like, it's very, very cheap, right? It's, it's not a $15,000 program, but still at the end of the day, if you can't afford it, don't do it, right? But for my people looking to pen, spend $10,000 in marketing though, okay? You do a lot better than putting 10 grand in a wholesaling course. I'm a man that always believes in free information for the people. The one thing I do tell you is spending marketing is not really, an, it's, it's an investment, not an expense. It's the spending the money on education when I think is kind of stupid to a point I've always been really opposed to these crazy stupid programs. But spending money on marketing, I don't think is ever a waste if you put it in the right way. And so if you're gonna spend a bunch of money, don't spend it on a course, spend it on education. That's what I tell everyone to do. You'll, you, most of the time you're gonna get a really good return on it. Next year, you're one relationship away from a $50,000 wholesaling deal. Understand this, you are 50,000, you are one relationship away from a $50,000 wholesaling deal. I've seen this time and time again in the comments and in, my, in the Discord and in my Facebook group of people and in Flipper Plus that got a relationship with someone and because of that relationship, they got the opportunity to do a $50,000 wholesaling deal, right? Uh, there's a couple of people that, you know, they, they made 80 grand on a wholesaling deal just because they met somebody else, right? There's this one person that, you know, because they met me and they heard me and Rick talk about probate so much that they did a probate deal and they made like $60,000 the first deal from a probate, right? You're, you're just one relationship away. So I tell everyone, go on YouTube, go on Discord, let people know who you are, connect with other people in, in the community that we have for free here. And you'll never know who you're gonna meet, but they might, hey, I have a seller, but I don't know what to do. Can we split this 50-50? Your life will change. So many people are getting their first deal from Javing inside the Discord, which is crazy. ZachDiscord.com. It's free, by the way. It changes their life. Absolutely insane. Last lesson, and I think one I think you should really put to heart here, is <clears throat> ask for a price reduction. It actually works. For majority of my wholesalers out here that struggle, that they get a deal locked up too high, and they, they're going about to cancel the contract, just ask for a price reduction. Hey, Mr. Seller, I talked to my partner. Because of the repairs, we're going to have to be closer to... $30,000 less, right? We're going to send you an updated agreement and buy it for $30,000 less, $30,000 less. You'll be shocked that you're, uh, you're about a 50, 40% success rate on your price reductions. So before you throw off a deal, if somebody sends you a JV deal and it doesn't work, just try to get a 50, $60,000 price reduction. It actually works. 
Now, it's not 100%, it's 34% of the time, but it actually really, really, really works. It's kind of crazy, but it does work. And so what I'll tell you is, try to go for your price reductions. It's actually insane. It does work a lot. At the end of it, that's how you do it. So guys, I have a free wholesaling course it's called frillsing.com. It teaches you how to wholesale real estate absolutely for free. And I'm telling everybody that is the best way to learn wholesaling real estate. If you want to join my Discord, it's called zachdiscord.com. I'll put it on the bottom really quick. Where is it? zachdiscord.com. Go join that and you can learn exactly how to wholesale real estate uh, absolutely for free.